Hi, welcome to a 14 day weather forecast. It has been very unsettled through the last week. Flooding in southwestern Britain has been making the news headlines and there have been some awful scenes from there. Now, the other notable feature of September so far has been the warmth. Here is the Central England temperature tracker provided by the UK Met Office. Provisionally to the 17th, it's running at, running at 18.8 Celsius, a huge anomaly of 5.2 degrees. Now, my view, and it's not a particularly scientific one because I haven't studied the data in depth, is that anomalous warmth in September correlates with an increased chance of milder winters. That may be something to keep in mind for the next few months. But coming back to the short to medium term, how are things shaping up? And as usual, I'm going to start with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 19th. At the outset, there is a vigorous Atlantic flow pushing across all areas, the tightly packed isobars indicating strong winds. At this point, the heaviest outbreaks of rain are mostly in the northern half of the UK. But as I run this, what we see is heavy rain pushes southeastwards. It could be slow to clear from the southeastern corner. Low pressure then keeps things showery. But as we go into the weekend, there are some indications here of a weak ridge of high pressure quietening things down a little bit. So an increasing chance of dry appearance. What happens beyond this becomes very questionable. On this animation, what we see is changeable conditions continue. Heavy rain at times, particularly in the north, but towards the end, high pressure starts to build up from the southwest. And by Wednesday, the 27th, it's mostly dry in southern and eastern Britain. The Atlantic increasingly banished to the northwest. The heavy outbreaks of rain are continuing, as are the stronger winds. But how this plays out is very open to debate just how much influence high pressure will be having. Here's the uh, jet stream and air temperature sequence. As I run it, what we see is, well, the UK is there and the jet stream uh, profile, and it really dips to our south for a while. But then later on, there are just indications of it starting to migrate northwards as high pressure builds up from the south. So perhaps, as I say, turning more settled, especially in southern counties towards the end of the first week. How do temperatures look at the ground level? 15 GMT, Wednesday the 20th, not a great deal to say, fairly close to the average, 20, 21 Celsius perhaps in East Anglia, cooler as you head north and west. Going forwards to Friday, they've dipped a little bit, so perhaps a tad below the norm in much of the UK. Into the weekend, they're now trending upwards. And finally, Tuesday v26, still reasonably close to where they should be at this time of the year. So I think not a great deal really to say about temperatures as we head through the first week. Not a big feature of the weather. But winds are, especially in the short term across the southern part of the UK, the more Krebs G Ensemble here is for London, and if you see the peak here on the 20th of September, most of the individual runs within the ensemble are showing gusts of around 50 miles an hour for a time. The chart on the right is the uh, high, resolu high resolution UKV one for 010 uh, GMT on Wednesday the 20th. The picture across the UK is a windy one, and you can see those higher values there in the southeast at this point. So strong winds are certainly quite notable in the short term across the southern half of the UK. Later on, the strong winds are more likely to be in the north and the northwest. Rainfall. Here are the days not to five aggregate charts from the ECM and GFS models. Rain in all parts of the UK, the wettest conditions, mostly in the west, but also if you look down at the southeastern corner, there are some high totals on both of those charts, and that's as a result of the uh, slow-moving outbreaks of rain, which are expected to uh, cross these regions through Wednesday. As I say, they could take a while to clear away from the southeast and east Anglia, hence those high values. 
Moving forward to the 0 to 10 day charts, the wettest conditions continue to be in the west and particularly the northwest. The orange shading in western parts of Scotland on both of these indicates some very high rain totals. Now, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 26th. At this point, high pressure is beginning to have more influence, at least in the southern half UK, more changeable still in the northwest. The Canadian model shows a relatively similar picture with low pressure to the northwest, high pressure close by over continental Europe. The German icon, a southwesterly across the UK with high pressure further east, but a similar general pattern. The European ECM, this one has high pressure building more strongly up across the UK, so drier conditions. And finally, the UK Met Office, conversely, low pressure continuing to be more influential according to this. Taking them all together, there are some significant differences in the details. Drier conditions, though, generally more likely in the south, but the uncertainty is really concerning how far northwards the chance of drier periods will be extending. So the balance between high pressure to the south, the southeast perhaps, and low pressure to the northwest, quite uncertain. Now, with that said, what pointers are there for the second week? Of course, at this range, it is all about trends and probabilities. And with the uncertainty towards the end of the first week, it just reinforces that message. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, a fairly strong signal there for them to be above average, more or less throughout the second week. There are one or two runs dipping below that thick black line for a short time at least, but the majority are staying above it and many of them significantly above it. Rainfall across the bottom, not very many spikes. It is quite a dry picture, perhaps just an increase at the very end there. But I wouldn't say totally dry in this part of the UK, but quite dry. Two meter temperatures using the data table. This Orangey shading shows runs going for between 21 and 25 Celsius maximums. The colour here, the lighter orange, 16 to 20. So looking at this objectively, temperatures are more likely to be above average from below it, and there is the potential for it to be warm on some days. Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is slightly above average. The anomaly there is smaller than the London one, and later on the Thick purple line, the ensemble mean actually dips back towards the thick black line, the 30 year norm, so somewhat cooler perhaps later on. There is an ongoing risk of rain. There are more spikes on this chart than there were on the London one, but having said that, not particularly wet, I think, if this is correct. Two meter temperatures for Manchester. The 16s to 20s are dominating, so a little cooler than in London, but to be expected because we're heading northwards. Continuing the journey, going to Glasgow, the air temperature profile here is close to average. There isn't really a positive anomaly at all. Runs are climbing above that thick black line and dipping below it. So I say a lot close to average than on the London chart. Another difference is the number of rain spikes for a more on this one than there were on the Manchester and London plots. So an ongoing risk of rain in the northwest the Atlantic continuing to be more influential here. Two metre temperatures. It's now the yellow which dominates 11 to 15. There is a reasonable amount of orange early on, 16s to 20s, but cooler once again as we head further northwest. The ECM um, ensemble probability charts, these show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on a particular day. Effectively, these are the charts for the first three days of week two, reinforcing the idea of it being wettest in the west, but especially the northwest, the orange shading there over western Scotland, indicating a high chance around 60 to 80% on each of those days. 
The uh, second half of the second week, drier once more in southern and eastern parts of Britain, a low chance of over five millimeters of rainfall in between naught and 20%, but it stays wetter in the northwest. The orange shading there once more showing up to around 60, 65% on days 11 and 13, maybe slightly lower on day 12. Here's the GEFS mean ensemble uh, surface level pressure plot for Friday the 29th. High pressure building up from the south as I've been discussing, a southwesterly flow across the UK, so not particularly cold of course, and that ties in with the two meter temperatures. Atlantic though having more influence areas of low pressure in the northwest. Here's the anomaly uh, for the same time, effectively the pressure anomaly. The yellow shading is indicating a positive anomaly, so higher pressure than the 30 year norm, and it increases as you head southwards across the UK. In the far north there, it's much closer to the average, as I've said, low pressure having more influence there. Here's the mean surface level pressure data table for York going forwards through the second week. There's quite a lot of orange in it, more than in recent updates. Those runs going for between 1,000 and 26 to 1,040 millibars, so well above the norm. Lots of yellow as well, close to or above average. Those runs tending to be at least, there are some in, the, in, in that category which are below it. Also a little bit of green, but not much. Those are runs which are going for distinctly lower pressure. So, Taking that together with the anomaly charts, I think there's quite a strong signal for above average pressure, especially across the southern half of the UK for much of the second week. So to summarise, week one, it's unsettled with heavy showers or longer outbreaks of rain, although towards the end the chance of drier interludes begins to increase, especially in the south. Temperatures fluctuate, but overall they will be close to the average. Also, there will be windy periods. Week two, settled conditions become more likely, particularly in the south. The wettest weather becomes focused on the northwest. Temperatures are expected to be dependent upon the extent of cloud cover and positioning of high pressure areas. There is a chance though that it will become warm at times. Once again, the greatest possibility of that is in southern counties. So there we have it. It's a mixed bag, the unsettled start, but a growing chance of high pressure becoming more influential once again as we head towards the end of the first week and through the second week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Also, don't forget that you can stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather details by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.